Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Kerbal Space Program series I'm calling KSP POV, where we play Kerbal Space Program in first person. Uh, mostly, <laughs> as you can see, we're not in first person here. Uh, why we started off on this satellite is, in the last episode we created some science zones where we can crash uh, space debris and get some science, so we decided that this satellite was going to be destined to be the first one uh, decommissioned out of all of them because we still have our satellite network is still covering us and so I'm hesitant about getting rid of all of it so I decided to decommission this one uh, I was surprised that it survived the atmosphere you know no heat shield no nothing and then that surprised me even more I was expecting the whole thing to be destroyed and instead just the engine so there, there's our luck but uh Today is all about money. If you can see up in the top, I have 68,000, and at the end of the last episode, we didn't have enough funds to launch our satellite. So we gotta figure out some way to make some cash. Uh, so I grabbed a contract just to test the part. Uh, testing parts is a great way of making quick money um, pretty cheaply. And so with this one, I decided to just make myself a little, a little buggy to travel down the runway because it is, uh, or not the runway, the launch pad, because this uh, contract requires us to test this decoupler uh, out in the in the ocean, splashdown. So, you know, I just uh, put a little camera on the front of the buggy and uh, control it from the mission control room. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this series uh, and this mod, looks strange to you, uh, it's called the Probe Mission Control Room, where you control them, and you can find all of the mods that I use down in the description below. But of course, uh, modding is complicated, so uh, don't just get all the mods that I have, make sure you read through the instructions and get all the dependencies, or in the right version, and so on. So, it's a little PSA about modding. So yeah, so this episode is going to be focusing a lot on rover science. Um, not actually rover science, but rover exploration. Um, we end up taking a cursed contract that... Uh, well, I'll get to that later. No need to jump ahead too far. But this is definitely going to be the start of the feeling of I thought it was a lot closer than it appeared because I'm rushing towards the water, and I every time that I swear that it's coming up on me, it's not. And I just hit on the brakes there just to figure out how close it was. And then then we finally make it. Our craft splashed down the water. Realistically, it should be done. It should be <laughs> destroyed by now with all the electronics. But this is KSP, and I was able to, able to activate the stage anyways, complete the contract, and get a little bit of money. But, uh, still don't have a lot of money, so I decided to come into the admin building and, uh, get a government bailout. Uh, 25% uh, commitment, and, uh, basically it cost me some reputation, uh, to, it gives me funds for the price of reputation. I was about to do it twice, but then I realized, uh, that would put us pretty severely in the negative uh, for our reputation goes. We're already negative 2% now uh, because of that bailout, but no need to go you know, just drastically. I just need money to launch a craft. So this contract that we're doing here is um, actually not going to get us any money. Uh, I didn't realize that until later, but uh, I named this the upgoer one because it's just a matter of getting Dill Pond uh, into orbit and then changing our inclination and uh, yeah we have to get to 45 degrees uh, and then it, what it'll do is it will give him an extra star so he'll become a two star pilot uh, no money but it will also clear this contract from our list uh, allowing us uh, to grab another one that will potentially will give us money So this is a very standard takeoff, very much by the books, and so I'm going to go ahead and skip to uh, arriving at my 
desired apple absence, and then the circularization burn, and then I get a little little notification I look and uh, I get the step one orbit achievement which is to create a single stage to orbit <laughs> my very first uh, SSTO in the series and it's not even a plane just uh, just a heavy thrusting rocket so I decide uh, since we have that uh, seismographer uh, I decide to kill my periapsis and so that way it descends back into the planet and uh, destage that that lower stage and uh, we'll get some science from that so great and you know since we use the entire or the, since we have the entire upper stage to use I had no problem spending a little extra fuel to get us back into orbit so now I'm just going to look at the contract and uh, yeah I just need to change my inclination positively uh, to 45 degrees. So uh, just kind of eyeballing it, I warp to between the, the two uh, abscesses, the periapsis and the apoapsis, um, the two abscesses. But I, pr I should have just um, looked uh, the time to inclination, the time to ascending node and descending nodes, but I didn't pay attention to that. That's on a different screen. Um, so as you can see the inclination is going up 36, 37, 38 um, right there in the middle I get myself to 40 and I start feeling like I'm going to be going too far because it started slowing down so I'm becoming less efficient so I just point myself uh, the opposite way go to the opposite side of the planet and then continue the burn for the last uh, 5 um, 5 degrees of inclination and then with that, our contract is uh, completed. As long as we can get Dill Pond uh, safely home, uh, then we will successfully have a star. And then I just noticed that I was just about to pass over our Grasslands seismographer uh, location. And I thought, hey, why not just use the rest of my fuel uh, to try and land the lower stage as close to that, or to crash the lower stage as close to that as possible. So yeah, it's just uh, it's a small craft, so it should have uh, no problem coming through the atmosphere. Uh, you know, we're already pointed retrograde. Uh, there are no cameras on this craft, which uh, you know, I kind of. Wish I had put on it. Oh, I'm about to fast forward through the atmosphere. We're gonna go really fast because I time warped while we were uh, playing. Time warped four times speed. Um, I wasn't really concerned. As you see, our temperature rose a little bit, but then came down pretty quickly. And that was the temperature of our heat shield, not even our, not even our capsule. Capsule barely heated up at all. So. As standard of a takeoff, as textbook as it was, it was just a standard textbook uh, coming down. Uh, our parachutes uh, ex extend and deploy uh, at the right time. We auto. Uh, there is the science that we got from the crashing uh, lower stage of the rocket. So it's nice. It's already showing uh, that we're. It's, it's already proving its worth. So now I end up picking up a small contract uh, for just a part test, and then I do it off camera because it, it went quick and wasn't really interesting. So I go ahead and do that. And then I uh, come back here and then grab the dreaded contract that we will be spending the rest of our time on. And that is to scan uh, a baobab tree with a scanning arm on a rover. So I come out here um, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to build it. Uh, I know all it needs minimum is a camera, an antenna, a battery, and a scanning arm to do the science. Uh, but I figured I'm like, you know, we're gonna have this great rover. Why not put actually, you know, more science experiments on it and just run them uh, whenever we can? We're gonna do the repeatable experiments. Um, since you know we don't have anybody to go out there and reset the ex uh, experiments like the mystery goo 
um, or so on. Even that um, uh, scanning target one, I believe, is not rerunnable, so we uh, end up taking that off eventually. So, not very creatively, I named this the Curiosity one. Um, couldn't really think of a good rubber name at the time, and so I'm just like, hey, you know, it's curious. It's curious about the Baobab, Baobab tree, so. Name of the Curiosity one, but it is far from uh, being as good as its uh, namesake, the Mars rover that we have in, in real life. It's just a, just a fun little rover. basically all there is to it, at least for this first design. Um, I uh, go for a test run. Uh, I don't simulate it, which uh, you know I should have been doing, because it does cost some money, but um, if you know we end up destroying a craft, that's going to be money cost as well. So I go ahead and hit deploy, which uh, activates my um, Antennas, right there, you can see. And then we uh, we go ahead and drive uh, off the uh, off the runway. We have a destination in mind, uh, which is over in the northwest. Uh, we hear rumors of not just the Baobab tree, but potentially a, a lost um, launch site relics from a previous uh, space program that is left unguarded and we could make use of that for our space program. So this mission is going to be a two-parter. Um, luckily there are Baobabs uh, in the vicinity of that uh, that place. So that's where our rover is heading. Uh, we go ahead and do uh, preliminary science right now. Um, I didn't keep the scanning target scanning science because uh, I figured we were going to be going for longer uh, and I want to get it in a different area but I do go ahead and transmit back the rest of the science and that's where we find out that this rover doesn't have nearly enough power uh, after two transmissions it was dead in the water uh, all that flashing that you see is um, the rover losing power which which kills the screens in the mod but because we have a few solar panels on there it's slightly getting power back right like it's doing a flip-flop of having like one percent then zero percent so that's what that flashing is right there is us losing control regaining it losing control um, so it's about time to call this one i realized that if we can't even do two transmissions, uh, there's no way that this this rover is going to be strong enough to uh, survive the journey. So we need to figure out a better way of creating power, and we decide to do these retractable solar panels. Uh, we wanted retractable just because if we end up running into rough terrain or something, we want to be able to pull them in so they don't get damaged. And we uh, use tweak scale to scale them down a little bit. Um, I feel pretty okay with that because I, I think we have... I think scaling up is more of a, an issue if you were to make larger solar panels because those could then, you know, provide more power than the standard ones. With the, the smaller tweak scale uh, items, you get less out of it. So these panels are going to be producing less than they would if I had kept them normal size. So I feel like it's a, it's a trade off there. I feel that that could be a little fair. So I go ahead and extend my solar panels and I just wanted to see. I didn't like the fact that they clipped through the wheels a little bit, but so far it seems to not give too much of a problem. So maybe I'll just leave them where they're at. So yeah, so now we are starting our journey. Um, we should have uh, more than enough power. Uh, turn on the lights a little bit, see uh, see how those are going. It's already starting to get dark. You know, we've taken so much time just uh, getting the room made and tested. And 
And then I decide to, uh, I was getting a little impatient, I was realizing how slowly this thing is going, only six uh, meters per second. I decide to time warp a little bit and quickly realize that by doing that, I will crash myself. Uh, so our first, our first true attempt at this mission uh, has failed. So I go and I decide that maybe it might be simpler to launch it on a rocket uh, to get it much closer to our destination and then drive it around from there. So I don't really need much, I just need to go up and then into the direction of where I want to go. Uh, I have a parachute on the top of the lander and the idea is that I'm going to just launch it off of the booster and then parachute it down. So yeah, so we go ahead and we get our, our screens lined up, um, our SAS on, and then we go ahead and we launch. Um, this was, again, not a simulation. Uh, it should have been, because uh, it's just money spent. Um, even just doing this, this kind of aspect to finish the mission off is going to be a bit of a waste of money, because we have to spend money just to launch it. We have to spend money on the simulation as well, but less. <laughs> um, so it's about this time that I'm realizing that this is uh, a failure. We don't have enough uh, fuel to correct our trajectory and really make it. Uh, so I decided to revert it. Um, I really shouldn't have. Uh, you know, I thought about it as soon as I hit revert. I'm like don't feel good about that I should have just I should have just uh, taken the loss um, parachuted the rover uh, collected the funds that I could have from that and then just gone so for that I'm sorry uh, as a consolation I will be making uh, more mistakes and spending more money uh, on this on this mission uh, so by the time that we're done with it, it's basically going to be like we broke even, or we might have actually gone into a deficit, but at least it was done. This contract took eight and a half hours, eight and a half real-time hours, uh, several different days of recording, uh, many times wanting to bash my head through my own monitor and just spending most of that time pressing W just keeping the keeping the rover going forward and uh, yeah I am so ready to be done with this episode <laughs> uh, ready to get back to flying with space and, um, we even we have another one of these contracts for rover scanning uh, but this one is to scan a rock on the surface of the moon so hopefully we don't want to break our computer doing that. Okay, so here's about the time where my rocket started to spin out of control. Um, you know, the center of mass just got too far back and the center of the uh, lift wasn't capable of handling it. So, as you can see, I'm going every which direction and my trajectory is, I'm trying to fight it to bring it to land, but it keeps just going into the ocean. And uh, I don't have the fuel to save it. Um, so what I do is what I should have done in the last one. I kick off the, uh, the rover, and then I just let it descend, um, back to the ground. Um, there's going to be some spinning in the right screen. Yeah, right there. So maybe look to the left if, uh, you get, oh, now they're spinning in the, the left. But, um, if, if you get motion sickness, uh, it probably wouldn't be good to look at the screen during this time. Okay, there you go. Now you can look back. We just drop our rover into the ocean, um, do whatever science we can, and then uh, go ahead and we're going to recall it and try again. So I went and uh, took off the target scanning thing uh, experiment and renamed this to the Busy B. Busy B1. Um, I have a better feeling, I think by naming it uh, our own name, uh, being original, will give us better luck. So now starts the six and a half journey 
six and a half hour long journey to check out rumors of uh, potentially another launch pad and to find ourselves a freaking baobab tree. Uh, at one point during this uh, during this journey, I decided to add parallax to see if I can make things at least more interesting to look at instead of just this flat green field. But I ended up turning the game to about two frames per second. And I do fast forward it, so it would have been better, but it would have easily turned this into like a 16 or 20 hour journey and have 20 hours worth of footage. And that would have been too much uh, to work with. So sadly, no parallax. Uh, so this is the end of day one. I got it about that far and then I kind of gave up because I had filmed the whole rest of everything that you've seen up until this point on day one. So I was already filming for about three hours. So the following day I go ahead and I pick up. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do, I'm going to do good. I'm going to do a lot more. I'm going to cover a lot more ground. Um, and I do, uh, I do make quite a, a, a good chunk on it. Uh, as you're going to see here. Uh, this footage is sped up to about uh, 3,500%. And, uh, oh, right about here is where my rover stops moving and starts rolling backwards. I had gotten up to get myself some coffee. Um, so all of this is happening during that time. And then I, uh, when I come back, realize that I'm going backwards uh, at 10 meters per second. <laughs> so I quickly try to throw on the brakes without breaking the wheels and then uh, climb right back up the mountain. And so, yeah, that, that taught me that uh, I need to be vigilant with this rover. That I can't just set it on autopilot and walk away. I, I actually have to be here. So not only can I not time, uh, time warp or physics warp, uh, but I can't leave either. So, so this is now day three. Um, Anytime you see me come to like a full complete stop, usually it's either uh, a new day or I had to uh, pause. Well, no, even when I pause, I don't come to a complete stop. So if you see me come to a complete stop, that's a new day. Uh, this took about four, so There's two more to go. Um, this is being sped up to 10,000% per speed, uh, this following clip. And if you look at the map on the left, you can actually see a line. That is my, uh, as my path. This was the uh, long the day that I did the longest amount of journey, and I was just pushing it. I wanted to get it done so much. This was uh, this came to be about four hours, forty five minutes worth of footage on just this day alone. Um, I was starting to go a little bit insane, um, and uh, I was really regretting this mission. I'm like, it's not worth it, you know. The little bit of science that we get, the, the fact that we get to build a rover and discover a new launch pad, like, yeah, that's cool. But why am I doing this to myself? I'm just. You know, I was I was starting to not have fun, started to get real irritated, and this was also delaying my my episodes. Like, like I wasn't able to put out an episode because I had to finish this. And then this is about the time the river dies, so I had to let it rest for uh, two days to get enough power to come back. And uh, so yeah, so. Now the mission time is four days, but it's actually been about two days, and every or a day and a half, a day and three quarters, and you know every day in Kerbal Space Program is five hours, five actual hours, uh, if you're not time warping. So yeah, so the mission time up there is just for today's uh, expedition. No, no, actually that's the total time. Never mind, that's the total time. Um, the map itself uh, only does today's uh, exploration. Doesn't it? Doesn't keep the line on the map from the previous times. It resets every time you reset it. But here I am going to what I thought was 
the Cove uh, launch pad, but it wasn't. So then, so then now here's day four starting off, and I realized that it's uh, the Cove is in the following little area on the map, following beach. So I am just jamming, trying to get up this hill. I keep sliding back down because I'm only going about three meters per second, not very fast. And uh, as I'm trying to climb to the top of this hill, uh, make it make it on over, and then I start gaining a lot of speed. I'm going 15 meters per second, uh, and that is roughly for in, in miles. That's roughly uh, like 35 miles per hour, somewhere around there. 40 miles per hour? Yeah, we're going about 40 miles per hour. Because I am just impatient. I just want to get this done. I am so tired of this mission. And, uh, that ends up, uh, screwing me in the end. Because, uh, I hit this hill way too hard. Break off one of my solar panels. And I try to recover it. But I end up going face down. So, I'm a little pissed. Um, I decide to uh, revert to a former state where I was upward, upright, and uh, I'm just gonna say we sent a cripple out there to flip it, and then cripples that cripples now walking, walking back home. Um, that's how I justified uh, saving the mission that way, because I'm almost there. I'm right here at the cove. I can basically see it. Um, and then once again, going 20 meters per second, which is at this point like somewhere around the lines of 50 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. Um, and I'm starting to do a speed wobble. And then it's not long until the mission's ruined again. Our scanning arm is broken. Uh, we no longer, we can no longer even scan the tree. No camera, so we couldn't even see the cove after that. And I'm looking on the map, and I'm starting to think, because I, I can't see it, I'm starting to think it might even be in that farther one. And at this point, I'm done. This mission is over. Let's recall this. Let's recall this thing, and just I don't know. Cancel the mission. Try again. I'll leave you with what actually happened. So in the following episode, I end up figuring out where that island cove is, and directly afterwards, I launch the Busy B2, and within the next like half an hour, I ended up coming across this beauty, a baobab tree. So excitedly, but also very irritatedly, uh, I scan it. You know, it's been it's been days of this this mission and uh just that little bit of science that 33 percent didn't really feel like a great consolation prize but uh you know i got to read the text about it transmit the science and complete that mission so it wasn't for nothing anyways that is the end of this episode thank you so much for watching if you liked it please give us a like and i will see you in the next one take care